Good morning or evening, ladies and gentlemen. Happy Tuesday to you all. Today we're gonna to be talking about, here we go again, it's gonna be the theme of the video today, and we're gonna be talking about NVIDIA, we're gonna be talking about the S&P, we're gonna be talking about is this a debt gap bounce or is this an actual bounce? I'm leaning more towards a bounce on the markets as a whole, and I'm gonna talk about several reasons and I'm seeing that. And one in simplistic, if you guys want Lux Algo, link down in the description below. It's a software I use to trade, and the smart money indicator is pretty awesome. So we got the smart money flip flow that is showing that we're going towards a more bullish run. As you can see here, last time it flipped, poop, nice push up. So again, are we gonna get a nice push up on the market? Now, that does not mean that we're gonna break the downtrend. It does not mean that we're gonna make new localized highs. So again, two different things of breaking the downtrend and basically making new highs, two separate categories. I'm saying that we could get a 50% retracement of this downfall. So let's say now that we have a quote unquote bottom per se, 50% retracement would bring the S&P up or sorry, the NASDAQ to 371.61. And if we do the same for the lovely S&P 500, which loves to retrace 50% of the move up or down, bring the S&P up to 446.23. Again, smart money flow is indicating a bullish flip and basically reversal. MACD looks like wants to curl along with the RSI. So we got multiple things stacking up one against the other to indicate, hey, we got a bullish run or a bearish run. If we just jump over over to the S&P on the SMA is just to see and where we are in the weekly range. We're basically still not above the 50. So again, that 443 area is where we're looking at. And again, for the retracement, I'm saying 446 around there. So we could easily get pierce to 446, which would bring us right above the 50 day. And then basically once we get that rotation, so again, you got your 50 right here you kind of come up pierce up above it and then come back down that's one scenario that i basically be looking at possibly but then again i would have to see how it all necessarily plays out because you really don't have positive indication that it's a true bullish uptrend you're not going to have that until you get maybe like nvidia's earnings and all the other things, some of the Fed stuff that's going on this week out of the way. And we covered the whole schedule for the week in the Week in Deep Dive, so link down in the description below if you guys wanna check that out. But again, with S&P and the NASDAQ, basically when this deadlock area, where we really haven't made super amount of progress, we do have a gap on the NASDAQ, and similarly on S&P actually filled the gap on the intraday. So in NASDAQ, we got a gap, again, you guys know my opinion about gaps, and then we're heading towards that 50. That's basically your bullish target, bullish run, because that would give you confirmation. Now, we did bounce on the trend line on the NASDAQ, the S&P bounced off a price action zone, and the MACD's curling up, so we could easily, easily get a rotation on the S&P to the upside. As we have shown here, especially everyone being super, super bullish about NVIDIA's earnings. And with that, guys, we're actually gonna dive into and talking about NVIDIA for a brief moment in time. I'm not gonna give you like this most depth analysis on NVIDIA. I'm just gonna give you my own two cents on it. So starting off with NVIDIA, boy, oh boy, running 8.4% on the previous day and, and post-market, at the time of this recording, which would have been last night when you guys are watching in the morning or in the evening would have been last night evening. So 471.47 post market for 96.67 close. So I said around 450. That's where I would like to shorten a video. Boy, oh boy, did it just blow that price point right out of the water. And again, I love this indicator, smart money flow. Smart money flow on the daily. I'm gonna zoom in for all you guys. And you can see that smart money, has, ever since this drop, has basically been selling NVIDIA going into earnings. So it's very peculiar that smart money is increasing their selling pressure as you're going up because they're selling into strength. That's what they traditionally do. They don't buy strength. They sell into strength by weakness in the market. So again, as you can see here, when they started buying, when NVIDIA kind of started topping out around here, they were buying, they were buying here, and then they flipped to basically once the whole Finch thing happened and everything like that. But going into earnings, there's a couple things we have to remember that when we were back at these price points down here of the 310s or even the 375s, we had a lot of insiders selling. NVIDIA issued shares. Now, that's not obscene issuing shares just because they're basically super, super overpriced basically at all, near all time highs at the point when they issued those shares. And now you're basically at all time highs. So it makes sense to issue those shares if they view their stock as overpriced. So 
which should indicate to you that, hey, this is basically going to be a good um, selling opportunity is not necessarily a buying opportunity. Now, that combined with a bunch of other things like, for example, smart money flow selling into it, and you have articles such as um, S HSBC hikes NVIDIA price target ahead of earnings seeing 80% upside. What are you on? Why are you upgrading NVIDIA prior to its earnings where the company hasn't necessarily shown you that even they can hit $11 billion? This is rampant speculation. And usually with rampant speculation, there is a rug pull event. Again, these people are saying the video is going to be $780, $600. That's implying an 80% upside to where it is now, which is just absolutely outrageous out of this world. Now, I'm not saying don't be bullish on the video. Like, I want to be bullish on the video. However, when we covered in their previous earnings, they were negative year over year. So the price you're paying, you're paying a premium for a company being negative year over year metrics. So in a world that you have inflation, that shouldn't happen. So they're actually more negative year over year versus their previous year. And also now they're telling you they're gonna have a record breaking quarter on revenue. I find it very difficult to believe. Now they could have some magical deal with a company that basically says, hey, we're gonna, generate all this revenue and they could issue more forward-looking guidance but it comes down really guys to 11.18 billion and that number just keeps getting revised up higher and higher every time i look at it so we basically they're saying they see they see strong despite uh guidance beat last quarter i'm just still not seeing it guys i don't see how you're going to go from near the numbers right it's a numbers game i don't see how you're going to go from 7.19 billion to 11.18 billion in a single quarter. That's literally an 80% increase on your revenue quarter over quarter. That's that's a hard pill to swallow. Now year over year, sure, I, I could definitely see that. I could see you going seven to nine, nine to 10, 10 to 11, right? I could see that. I could see that one quarter bigger jump and then kind of smoothing out over the next quarters. I could definitely see the revenue, especially with NVIDIA. NVIDIA is a very top tier company, has a lot going for it. However, I don't think that, you know, my spiel about company running into earnings, I'm going to take that shortening opportunity all day long. You get the divergence here on the MACD, which I think the video is basically going to either pierce these new highs, create a new all-time high tomorrow, today, if you guys are watching this in the morning, and basically rip everyone's face off coming back down, and then be maybe sideways into earnings, but I don't, I do not suspect a 30 or 20% upside on earnings. I don't think you're going to repeat this gap up here just because that probably make it the most parabolic company in existence where you would just spike the high and then you're literally parabolic and then you have that entire correction to go through, which would most likely res result you coming back down to the 200s at least. So again, I wouldn't necessarily be playing NVIDIA bullish into earnings and all, especially with the options chain being inflated IV as all hell then I would be looking more to the sell the option side, but due to the volatility, it's like, I'd rather just sit this one out, guys. That's just my two cents. But again, to each their own, I'm just trying to give you guys a different perspective on NVIDIA earnings and just being maybe the voice of reason or maybe the voice of caution. Now, you could go and you could buy the shares and the thing could go up 30% and you could completely prove me wrong, but I don't believe that's proper risk management. I don't think anything out there you're not really going to hedge yourself necessarily against the downside potential of this company because if they don't deliver 11 billion dollars they're basically not gonna mash it out of the park i could see maybe like 10 or 9 at most i think they miss by at least a billion i don't see this quarter being this ridiculousness they've had a history and a track record of basically bsing you on earnings so I don't know why everyone hasn't learned their lesson, and we shall see on Wednesday what happens. I'm definitely going to be dabbling in some puts, buying them into NVIDIA's earnings basically right before the close, just to maybe take some downside potential on the company. But enough about NVIDIA. Let's just quickly run through some of the bigger tech companies just to see what they're indicating for the market as a broader whole. The King, Apple. Apple MACD crossed over, separating from one another, and we start getting smart money flow turning a bullish reversal signal right here. 
And I'll caution, we did have one before that turned into bearish, that turned back into bullish, but we do have a divergence right here. So we should catch the bounce right here. Smart money flow is saying bearish trending right now. So again, a lot of more people are smart money wise, they are dumping Apple right here versus buying it. So we just have to see how that all plays out. Really not showing a lot of strength today in Apple. Microsoft kind of topping out right here. We do have the smart money flow or turning bearish going into Microsoft. So you could get some price appreciation just because natural tendency of trying to buy the bottom or toe dipping. And we basically could get some more rotation in Microsoft to the upside, but not a significant amount. This is why I'm leaning more towards the credence of this being a short term bounce in the market versus like this massive rip your face off rally, because there's not a lot of bear fuel. We showed in the weekend deep dive that all these bears are capitulating out. And basically, this is just more of a uh, it's a mix between a dead cat bounce and a bigger bounce. I don't know really what you would call it. Short term bounce, I guess I would call it that. But then again, this is not a bear fuel rally bounce because there's not a lot of bear fuel left in the tank anyway, not traditionally. And you still have that big trillion dollar short from one of the big stigs sitting out there. So we have to see how that all plays out. You really haven't seen that capitulation yet. That would be some insane 5% day on the market once those that big of a stig capitulates on their trade. Usually they don't. However, Amazon not showing any strength whatsoever, bearish, bearish, and bearish. So continuation. So you're not seeing Amazon basically print new highs. We do have that 140 area that basically I said, hey, once you start breaking below this, all hell is going to break loose. Hey, and you nearly fill the gap. So with Amazon looking weak, and again, Google, similar story. We're not really showing strength in this area, and we're trying to possibly come back and fill this gap. Once this starts accelerating, smart money flow is saying, hey, this is not where you want to necessarily be at. You are slightly bullish in this area, but then again, that could just be toe dipping from some of the bigger institutions. You still bearish, bearish, and bearish on the R side, just recently crossed. So we could see more downside potential. And if we look at the weekly, it's just bearish overall. We've got a bearish signal on the weekly here. So I don't know if that's gonna reverse anytime soon on Google. Netflix, looking like it wants to dip, uh, t t toe dip into here, buy a signal. It's a small indication of a reversal on smart money flow. Could get some more downside testing. I'd be looking for this trend line to bounce. That'd be reversal zone, buy signal. Smart money flow probably would give you an indicator and the MACD would start curling. So again, looking for Netflix to come back to maybe that 385 area. Then we got Meta broke the trend. Now we're gonna see if we get the retest of the trend and bounce. However, no indications of a reversal coming in and amd so amd basically had a bounce right here smart money flow is saying that it's going to have a bounce macd probably crosses and amd comes back to retest the 116s that's just my expectation especially if nvidia runs into earnings it's definitely going to pull up intel and amd with it but overall i'd be looking towards a more cautious bounce than necessarily hey go all in that's not what i'd be doing right now would like to see how the Fed and Nvidia plays out before I get into any larger positions on the market as a whole. And then yields, of course, just staying strong throughout. Today was a mixed day. Some sectors red, financials, of course, red. So again, answer the question that I always riddle to everyone. How can you have a bull market or a new all-time bull market if your financial sector is basically in shambles? I'm still waiting for an answer. So if you guys got that answer, throw them down in the comment section below. And if you would not mind hitting the like and subscribe button, it really helps the channel out and help tells it the YouTube algorithm that you like the channel and that to push us to more people. We're trying to grow the channel. So any help is much appreciated. And I hope to see you guys for the live stream tomorrow on Wednesday. So see you then and hope to see you in the next video.